Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, first of all, before I go on, we are going to be doing trade talks for part two of the series we've been doing of which player from every team is most likely to be traded this season in 2022-23. But before I do, I'd like to thank all of you that have been commenting down there in the comment section. It's awesome. And for those that have subscribed and liked the video, liking the video and subscribing really helps YouTube know that people like it and more people watch it and more programming like this is going to come your way. So hit it up. All right. Part two, we're going to be looking at the Montreal Canadiens to the Winnipeg Jets alphabetically. And again, it's which player from every team is most likely to be traded in the 2022-23 season. That doesn't mean it's going to. I'm not starting any rumors out there. I'm just adding logic to what it looks like based on what they have in their lineup, what direction they're going, or appear to be going anyways, and how the general manager usually works and the team usually works. So based on those four criteria, I'm going to pick a player from every team. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. Also, I'm going to be doing a lot of lives now. The hockey season's coming up. So that'll be fun. I do uh, uh, analysts for off-the-wall hockey and Peyton on the radio. Uh, we get on there. They do the all the yapping <laughs> play-by-play. And uh, I do the analysis. And it's much frolic. Let me tell you. All right. Let's take a look starting at the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal Canadiens who are yeah, rebuilding, right? Quick rebuild. They have Gorton there as not the general manager. It's Hughes, but uh, Gorton did such a great job with the New York Rangers. I think primarily he's the main force behind a lot of the trades that are ha- that are happening or moves that are happening. Uh, Hughes was an agent, of course, and I think he does a lot of stuff with uh, pl- one-on-one with the players. This is just my thinking and also contracts, which is great because Gord- the worst part about being the general manager is contracts, really. So you have a guy there that can it specializes in all of that as he was an agent at one time. So who is the most likely to be traded from the Montreal Canadiens. Now, I think a lot of Montreal Canadiens fans will be putting their hand up and going, Jonathan Drouin, please. Uh, But, and I hope he has a killer season this year. I say that every year. Injuries, mental health issues, all of those sort of things like that. I'm always back in guys that have uh, publicly struggled with their mental health and are coming back. So I'm hoping he crushes it this year. And maybe he does move on. But, what Gorton kind of did and sort of a trend he almost started in New York was he signed free agents and traded them for draft picks. And this year, I think he sort of did that with acquiring of Genny Dadanoff from the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, if Genny Dadanoff is, 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 so, is kind of inconsistent the last couple of years, when he found out, when he was over in Vegas and they tried to trade him, but it turned out they couldn't because uh, Anaheim was on his no-trade list, after that, something seemed to wake up with him. And he had a great second half of the season, or at least after the trade deadline. He did pretty well. And I think he'll do pretty well here. And I think Montreal is hoping he does because I don't think their long-term plans are for a 33-year-old d- dad enough. I think they acquired him, hoping he does have a very good season. And teams are always looking for scoring at the deadline, in which case he would most likely move on. Now, another player that has been coming up a lot is Joel Edmondson. Now, I've just heard this as rumors. Not quite sure if there's anything to it, but I could see Joel Edmondson moving at the deadline as well. He would be my second pick. Simply because Montreal does have a lot of solid uh, young defensemen coming up through their system. And by the deadline, 
they may be ready, like Caden Goulet, to really get a good look in the NHL. And Edmondson could really be blocking that. At 29 years old, you know, solid guy that he is, and not a bad, not a bad cap at a three and a half. There's probably not, he's probably not going to be very good or at his peak by the time Montreal is good again. So if you can pick up a second or a first for him at the deadline, give their younger players a chance, I could definitely see it happen. So those are my two picks. Sub yourself up, Montreal Canadiens fans. Tell me in the comments section what you think, who you would like to see traded if possible, and if you agree with my picks. Next, the Nashville Predators. And the Nashville Predators are really interesting team this year. I have them possibly making some really serious noise this year after picking up Ryan McDonough to make that defense probably maybe the most underrated in the league, like top five in the league. And going out and getting Nino Niederreiter to go along with the signing of Philip Forsberg, basically telling everybody in the land that we ain't rebuilding here. So who would most likely be traded? I have a feeling that if Eli Tobinin only moderately improves, even if he improves, you know, if he improves significantly, he probably wouldn't be on the block. But the thing is, I don't really see anybody here that would for sure be on the side of being traded. Eli Tovenin is probably the most likely. He's young. He could bring back more of a veteran to play on that left wing side. And any rebuild, uh, rebuilding team would probably have a player that maybe not, might not be as interested it for them to keep and be able to move them in this situation. Another thing I could see happening here is possibly uh, Tobin and being packaged with a guy like Granlin, who isn't a classic number one. In fact, I would say Nashville really doesn't have a classic number one center, although strong overall depth up the middle, to acquire that number one center they've been looking for for quite some time. Now that Matt Duchesne is primarily seems to be falling into the spot of the, the right winger on that line, I could see something like that happening. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans. Who would you most likely see moving on from Nashville if uh, that were to be the case? And who would you maybe like to see move on anyways down there in the comment section? Sub yourself up. Watch this whole video, by the way, and you can maybe get an idea. Some of the players you could get back in return for some of the players you thought you might like to trade. Okay, next, the New Jersey Devils. And this one is tough. This is a team apparently just coming out now that was really going after Matthew Kachuk. And I'm not surprised by that since Tom Fitzgerald is uh, – uh, extremely high on analytics and uh, Matthew Kachuk is an amazing analytically. So I could see how he was putting everything he could into that, even though Matthew Kachuk didn't uh, put New Jersey as one of the teams that he was willing to be traded to. It sounds like he still gave it a shot. So with that being the case, they ended up getting Andre Palat instead in free agency but I would not be surprised at all if there is a lot more talk to New Jersey trying to improve on that wing. And a team, a player that I think, even when I talk on New Jersey boards, that people seem pretty happy to kind of move on from simply because they have so much depth. New Jersey has so much depth coming up on defense with, uh, Maka Madulin, uh, of course, um, Hughes, and uh, of course they already have Hamilton, and they went out and got John Marino. So it just seems like Damon Severson might be on the kind of outside looking in possibility. And I, I think he's a very good defenseman. It just shows you how solid New Jersey has in depth to be able to dangle a guy like Damon Severson for – possibly some scoring depth. And that would be my number one guy here as a possibility of moving out. 
especially if they were in it at the deadline and they really need scoring still. I could see him and possibly somebody like Igor Sharon Govich uh, being packaged together, maybe the first round pick next year for like a humdinger of a player. Again, watch the video, watch the video all the way through, and maybe you'll see some players who'd be like, yeah, I'd like that, and uh, get an idea of who they might get in return. Sub up to the channel, let me know, New Jersey fans, what you think about that, and who you may also see being traded. Another guy who's been Ryan Gray, as I heard about that. I'll comment with you. I'll chat with you down there about it. Okay. Next, the New York Islanders, and I hummed and hawed over this for a long time because Lamorello is a guy that he doesn't even really like trading players at all. Um, he's a huge culture, build a team, build a family type general manager. Um, he won't trade players for returns that he finds embarrassing to the player. Um, so a lot of players end up staying because he won't, trade a player for a fifth or a sixth round pick. If you don't want him, you don't want him. That's his attitude. It's kind of interesting, actually, to be able to think of it that way. And I'm sure it does build a lot of value in the room where they feel like they're valuable to the organization. Um, a lot of guys I think the Islanders fans would be interested in moving on from would be guys like Kyle Palmieri, but I just don't see anybody taking that contract, even if they do managed to retain some of it um also he's part of the family I, that's kind of what i'm saying uh anthony bilvillier has been out there but why would you want to trade youth unless you brought youth back really i don't see anybody on this roster that sticks out as a possibility but i am going to go with josh bailey simply because with the new coach now that Trotz is gone, apparently youth is going to be given more of a chance. And Oliver Wallstrom will probably be playing up on that line. Somewhere down the road, Bailey will likely have to be moved, making $5 million a year and kind of underperforming. I think if he were to be moved, he'd probably be moved somewhere where they would give up a pick to get rid of his contract to be able to pick up another piece to add more scoring to this line. Bailey is just not scoring enough, and they need more scoring. Oliver Wallstrom is a shooter. He needs to be given a shot. So I could see something like that happen. So that would be my choice. I don't know if it's possible, but on this lineup, I think he would probably be the most likely to move on. I thought about Scott Mayfield, but really they don't have too much for defensemen to take his spot. So I doubt he'll be going anywhere. Islanders fans, let me know in the comments section. Make sure you watch the whole vid so you can kind of get an idea of who you may get back in return for some of the guys that you would like to move on for from and tell me about it and I'll tell you about it and we'll talk to each other. Sub yourself up and let me know. Okay, New York Rangers. Um, huge deep team when it comes to defense, especially for the New York Rangers. And the first one's pretty obvious. Uh, it's almost too easy in Lundqvist because Lundqvist has already been asked to be traded. Um, I would like to talk about that a little bit, though, because I've heard a lot of stuff like poo-pooing on Lundqvist for saying that he would like to be traded, like, wow, 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 you're not good enough for our top four, so now you just want to move. Yeah, pretty much. And that's simply because they have Truba locked up, Fox locked up, and Braden Schneider is a beast. That doesn't mean that Lundqvist is not a good defender. He is. And he's going to be, you know, uh, he's going to be a restricted free agent coming up. And he's not going to be getting a decent contract if he's in the minors. You got a family to feed. You got to make a decision for your family to max your dollars out as a hockey player. I would be doing the same thing as him. Because there are teams out there that can use Niels Lundqvist. Did I say Anders Lundqvist, by the way? Niels Lundqvist. There's teams out there that can use him. Uh, definitely can. He could definitely play in the NHL right now on some teams, which would increase his value a great deal. So I don't, you know, I would do the same thing if I was him. I don't know why everybody's getting on him for it. People are just doing what the best that they can for themselves. Now, besides him, I'm going to go to another defenseman. 
Libor Hayek, because uh, Libor Hayek will likely also be beat out, I would imagine, by some guys that they have stewing in the, have been stewing in the minors for a while. Zachary Jones, Matthew Robertson. These guys are going to need an opportunity here pretty soon. And uh, Libor Hayek almost is, seems like he's reached his max right now. And again, there's probably teams that could be out there to use them. But this really tells you about how much depth there is for the New York Rangers. So much so that I almost put Braden Schneider on this list. But I won't yet quite yet. But somewhere down the road is going to get pretty interesting. If Jacob Trouba is making $8 million a year, when uh, Braden Schneider, what he's going to want, because he's going to be probably a top pairing defenseman. Uh, that, there, that's going to be some interesting conversations going on there uh, when, when it gets to the point where he really has taken over from as a better player than Truba. And he will. And I think pretty quickly. Uh, as long as they can fit him in the cap, it'll probably be all right. But somewhere down the road, that little that little plot is going to get interesting. Tell me what you think about that, New York Rangers fans. I also wanted to mention that uh, it'll be interesting also if Alexis Lafreniere can't convert to the right side, which really are uh, really good players like Panarin and Kreider haven't been able to do very well. Kreider does play on the wing, uh, on the power play, so maybe they can try to put him there instead. But if he's not able to or they don't think he's good enough to be on the right side and neither is Lafreniere, that'll get interesting down the road as well. All right, next. Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators just brought in a whole bunch of players. Uh, so finding ones that they're going to trade or possibly could trade this year is a little difficult to do. It probably won't be anybody from their top. Nine, I would say. They just brought in Mott. I don't think Shane Pinto is going anywhere yet, although that'll get interesting down the road because Shane Pinto is probably going to be a top six center and you already have Stutzla and Norris there that are signed long term. But for now, that's not going to be a deal. Where it'll likely happen is down with their defensemen. And, um, and that is going to be completely dependent on how guys like Sanderson, who I do believe they have in the minors for next year, as it stands right now. However, so much talk about him making the roster this year, him being that good that he makes the roster this year. In which case, uh, depending on how good he, he is, also you have Lassie Thompson on the right side. And I think he could be ready this year. So it's kind of depending on that. Without those guys being able to make the roster, I don't see much movement here at all. However, Brandstrom is a restricted free agent coming up. And depending on what he asks for, and this could be a situation where it's like Lundqvist too. I'm 23. I think I can play. And I see these guys coming up behind me here where Brandstrom himself is going, you know, I think maybe it might be best that you move me in a situation where I'm a little more comfortable that I won't be taken out. So I had a difficult time f figuring out which guy was likely going to move. I almost went with Travis Hamannick because really, do they really need him all that much? But they did bring him in for veteran leadership. They don't really have anybody to replace him right now. So I'll go with Eric Branstrom. Maybe using him for some holes up front if they're ever if, like injuries or something like that. But for the most part, I don't really see too much in Ottawa moving. Tell me what you think, Ottawa Senators fans. Who would you uh, maybe like to see move? If there's a player that you're like, ah, I wouldn't mind seeing him move. Or if you disagree with me on Eric Branstrom, maybe you can give me another name. Maybe I'm missing something. Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. All right, next, Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, every time you bring up Philadelphia Flyers, it kind of gives me a headache. They're sort of my team in the East. Um, and I don't even know if they know really what direction they are going here. 
it seems, are they going for it? Are they not going for it? I'm not really sure. I do know that this, I'm just going to go take the easy, the low-hanging fruit, as they like to say. If James Van Riemsdyk can even have the year that he had last year, a 24-goal score that's 6'3", 217, it's got to have some value out there, at least at half the cap hit. If the Philadelphia Flyers could retain half the cap at $3.5 million, I could see this finally being the year that they gain some value from James Van Riemsdyk and he moves on somewhere else. If it really goes south, there could be a lot of move, a movement here. Uh, you know, like Scott Lawton. Okay, maybe not a lot of movement. There's not much they can move. You're not moving uh, Ristolainen, Travis Sanheim maybe, but I mean, they have no defense. They really don't have any defensemen that are going to be able to take that spot for a while. So, weird situation in Philadelphia. I do think James Van Riemsdyk will probably move on. Maybe Morgan Frost, too, because I've heard that Furster is really going to get a shot this year. Their first round pick, what, two years ago, who had a killer world junior? And honestly, if he's if he's close to being good, close to being a, a, a ready, he's going to beat out Morgan Frost. So I, I think Morgan Frost could be another guy on his way out. Tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Who would you move out? Who do you think should get moved out? And who do you think would be most likely? Comment in the comment section and let me know. Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, with Pittsburgh, there's only one guy I see here that could be moved. And I think he would be moved in order to upgrade the same position in, in that he's in. So they would actually have to give up an asset probably to move on from him or just basically retain. And that's Jason Zucker. They would retain some money, send him off somewhere, you know, just basically to make some room, some space to get somebody else to go in that top six. He's been injured a lot the last couple of uh, two years. Um, he's got a very high cap hit. He's really preventing them from, maybe adding, having a, a more solid top six. Unless for some reason he turns it around this year, I think there's a very good chance that Jason Zucker moves on. Besides that, I don't see anybody. They brought everybody in here for a reason, and I don't see anybody else, anybody else moving on. Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh fans. Anybody else you'd like to see move here? Maybe Kasper Kap, or Kasperi Kapanen goes back into the tank again. But if he does... They're probably not going to be able to move them now. They really did gamble, giving them that three point two million for the next two years. If he doesn't, if he has the same year as last year, I don't think he moves. If he's not good, and I don't think he moves if he is good. So that's why I didn't pick Kasperi Kapanen. Comment in the comment section. Let me know, fans. All right. Next, San Jose Sharks and. It's kind of tough to get a read on where San Jose is moving here. They did trade Burns, which leads me to believe that they are doing what I think would likely be a slow rebuild. When they can find a way to move assets, they'll move them, trying to get as many picks as they can to build this team up somewhere down the road. Like That's really, all I think, all they have with these bad contracts that they have. Um, I'm sure Eric Carlson, if they could find a way to find a home for him, he'd be happy with, they would do so. But nobody's taken $11.5 million, and I don't want to retain six that much money until 2027. So, and it just, he, he does bring people to the rink. He's a name that, he do, that does bring people to the rink. The guy I think, only person I see here, only player I see, there's, there's a, like, Nick Benino is going to be a free agent at the end of this year. If they're out of the playoffs, which I think they totally are, he's 34 years old. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind going and getting a chance at another cup somewhere, and they can pick up a, a draft pick for him. I think it's also possible that Oscar Lindblom was brought in with that idea sort of in mind. 
However, if he plays really well, he's only 26 years old. They'll probably keep him a lot. Keep him. They'll probably keep him there and maybe give him another contract. They've been doing that with their young, gish players like Thomas Hurdle, Alexander Barabanov, and Timu Meyer is up right now. There's been speculation of Timu Meyer moving, but everything I'm hearing in San Jose is they're gonna they want to build around him. And they want to create stability for the young players that are coming up. I'm not sure I agree with that, but with doing it that way, I'd much rather just see a teardown rebuild and build this up, right? Have fun trying. Mr. Greer looks like he's making some pretty astute moves out there. And uh, it's possible that that works out for them. Also, Nico Sturm got a, a third or something like that from Minnesota. I think that's what it was. No, no, no. We got a young player. I can't remember what it is, but that could be somebody that they use at the deadline. More than likely, that's what's going to be happening. They're going to take whatever players they can find, get some draft picks, and keep on building this system up. And I think Nick Benino would be the most likely of the bunch. Tell me what you think, San Jose fans. Nick Pino, you want to keep him? You want to keep him because you need veterans, but you already have Logan Kutcher there. Anyways. I'll talk to you about it in the comment section, all right? Com comment down there. Let me know. Sub yourself up. All right. Seattle. This is interesting. Honestly, okay, here was my take. I thought Ron Francis, what he was doing was he was picking up free agents for the purpose of somewhere down the road trading them and getting draft picks and keep on building the base for this organization. It is something I would do. I kind of got, I thought what he was doing was talking to free agents that, that were out there or players that they brought in and said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll give you an extra year of, your, of stability for your family or two. Come on over to Seattle. We'll see how it goes. If we can make it work and we fly, then just we'll stick in Seattle. If it doesn't work out that way, we'll probably have to look towards um, getting more picks and building our farm system up and stuff like that. Um, and uh, which case we give you a, we'll give you a couple extra years of stability to have to go through a move like that. I thought that's what he's doing. And maybe that is what he's doing. He picked up Andre Burakovsky. He picked up Oliver Bjorkstrand. Both of those guys are guys that you could definitely do something like that with. He gave them pretty Decently long contracts for their age and a decent sized contract for what they've achieved so far in their career. So maybe, but it's also possible that he just believes Beneers is going to be such a beast. And of course, Tyler Wright that they, and I heard that they're planning on uh, having Wright fill that second center spot right off the get go. In fact, I heard that Wright wanted was telling teams that if they weren't planning on playing him right away that he didn't want to go there and that's the reason why he fell so if that's the case he it, it, they they could just go off and be superstars right now i'm i'm honestly i'm a little unsure about that at 19 years old veneer has uh, still got some bulk to go but he did play well in 10 games if it sort of works out that way, they could have a pretty solid team here already and they just have to add to defense. So this whole long-winded thing, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, who do I think is most likely to be traded? Well, they brought in Burakovsky, who's already got a cup. Bjorkstrand's been around the league for quite a long time, uh, even for 27 years old. You've got some uh, leadership there. And... I don't think Bjorkstrand's going to be really wanting to play on the third line if he's playing for still one more contract. So he and, and also in Columbus, he played better on the right side, which with Jordan Eberle there is pretty filled right now. I think it's possible the guy that could be moved is Jordan Eberle. He's 32 years old. He's, in, he's got a contract coming up at the end of 2024, and I'm not sure they would want to sign him past this age at this point point um they could get a nice package maybe add another defenseman or um fill those picks up because really seattle hasn't built their farm at all and this is the thing that kind of concerns me 
you see a lot of teams out there, they build up their roster and it looks good. Injuries happen and they're screwed, right? Because they don't, they haven't built up their farm system yet. Also, as these players get older, if there's nobody there to replace them, the team never goes anywhere. So I could see Jordan Everly being used there, like for a first in 2023 this year, if they're out of the playoffs. I do think it's likely that they're out of the playoffs as well. And that can add. So that would be my most likely guy to be moved on, moved for on from. Another guy could be Justin Schultz that they picked up and gave him sort of an extra year at 32 years old. Because most teams probably wouldn't want to give him more than one year. He's primarily an offensive guy. He's not that great defensively. He's a guy also I could see them getting a draft pick for if they're right out of it at the deadline. Tell me what you think, fans. Who would you most who would you like to see leave? Maybe there's a guy who's like, you know what, I'd rather see somebody else in there than him. Let me know in the comment section. If you disagree with me, let me go. Sub up to my channel. Let me know in the comment section what you think about that. All right, next. St. Louis Blues. And I mean, as much as I looked at this roster, there's two players I could see moving on. And it's completely based on the fact that they have so many guys to sign and specifically Ryan O'Reilly. That one is going to be interesting. And I hear a lot of talk how they don't think that they're good. O'Reilly's going to be looking for the seven-year deal, sort of like what Kadri got at about $7 million a year. Now, if you know anything about the St. Louis Blues, they have not um, liked the idea of signing older players to those type of deals. They traded Peter Angelo for the love of God. They traded Shattenkirk when he wanted it back in the day. So they already signed Robert Thomas up. They signed Jordan Cairo up. Could they move on from Ryan O'Reilly? The leader, the spiritual leader for this team? Man, I'm on the fence. I think it could be 50-50. I don't know if they want to. I really don't know. Ryan O'Reilly is the type of guy. He doesn't, he's not very fast. And he does seem to be losing a step already. But it's hard to let a guy like that go. Tough. But we know one for sure. Tell me what you think about Ryan O'Reilly first, by the way. Because that's going to add a lot of cap space. And you already got Braden Shen there, too. I don't know. But... Vladimir Tarasenko is definitely on his way out. Uh, he already asked to be traded. Uh, if they're in a playoff spot, which I think they will, the sad part is you may not get anything for him. They may keep him. However, St. Louis hasn't been known to do that either too often. We just, you know, Shattenkirk, they have, they have been known to move on from guys and make sure they get uh, – some value out of them, even if they're in a playoff spot and if they're going for it. So I, it, it's possible that could happen. But that would be my most likely for sure. The other guy, apparently Marco Scandella was part of the package they were sending to Kachuk. And with that being the case, if anybody would like to take that contract, I think he could be out as well. All right, St. Louis. Like, oh, and they have Perunovic coming up as well. Isn't he a righty, though? No, he's a left defenseman. Yeah, they have Perunovic that they want to make room for. That's another guy as well. Tell me if there's anybody else, St. Louis fans, or if you think I'm crazy to even think about trading Ryan O'Reilly. What would you do? Would you sign Ryan O'Reilly to seven years until he's 38 years old for $7 million a year? Oh, man. Like, right now, you need them. But then, it can be, it can look really bad. It can look really bad. Comment in the comment section. Sub up to my channel and let me know. The Tampa Bay Lightning. And there's only one guy, but I doubt he gets traded. It's just, they're going to be in a playoff spot. Tampa Bay just lets guys go, you know. He did it with Palat. They did it with Palat. But it's possible that this time they could actually make a move for Alex Kalorn 
somewhere in the season simply because they do have uh, Ross Colton to play there. They, they already got Brandon Hagel. If one, one of their surprise prospects or minor league players comes up and kicks butt, maybe uh, Alex, uh, you know, Barboule, he's been up and down, up and down, up and down. He secures the spot. And they may go for it. Gabriel Forche, somebody like that. If somebody takes a spot on that roster, it's possible. More than likely, though, they're going to keep him. But he's really the only guy I see that they would be moving on from. Uh, this lineup, I think, is going to be the lineup through the year. Uh, Anthony, uh, you know, Sorelli's also going to come up. I almost forgot about that, too. And that would push... Alex Kalorn down. So Kalorn would be the guy, I think. And also, they ran out of first-round picks now for the next couple of years. So if they could get a first-round pick for Alex Kalorn, I think they may do it. That would be my guy. Tell me what you think, Tampa Bay fans, about that. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. Next, Toronto Maple Leafs. And... I was thinking about going something crazy here. Um, and maybe something crazy does happen. And something crazy may happen. If Matt Murray and Sam Sonoff are as bad as they were last year, all bets are off, man. I could see somebody like William Nylander going to, you know, out of desperation to get a goaltender from someone. But there's th that, that, like, when you're in that kind of desperation for a goaltender, when you're trying to win now, like their windows now, I think they could do something absolutely nuts. Their first round pick would be gone. You know, Kerfo, whatever. But if Matt Murray can turn it around, I don't really see much moving out of this lineup. They're not going to change this top six. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about them moving on from Alex, Alexander Kerfoot. But I don't think the value out there for in on any other team is is as much as what he is for Toronto. So I don't see him moving. The only person I t player I see moving is Justin Hull. He's a right winger, right defenseman. Um, he had a good first year. He's been sliding ever since. Timothy Lilligren, I do believe, will take his spot. And I think they're going to try Sandine on the right side. they got to get him signed up. Uh, he's the future. Giordano is not going to be there forever. Jake Muzzin's not going to be there forever. He can slip over to the left side later, experiment with it, or whatever you got to like, experiment with him on the right side. Hopefully it works out. If it does, Justin Hole most certainly will be traded. At $2 million a year, I'm pretty sure there's a team out there that will give you something for him. He's good enough to play in the bottom your a team's bottom six for two million, or even for two million, being a, a replacement player, if for injuries and stuff like that. But that would be my guy because the only other one would be, for me, for sure player would be either Matt Murray or Sam Sonoff, if they're absolutely garbage and they they need to get another goaltender, they would move them plus somebody else plus somebody else. Sandine, again, uh, could be part of that. They're going to need, if those guys don't work out, they're going to have to scramble and find a goaltender. So they might have to over, they might have to overpay for it by then. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans. Who would you see most likely moving on? Oh, just as I'm saying this, I forgot. Michael Bunting's going to have to get paid next year. Wow, that could be difficult. If he has a stellar year, I don't know if they're going to have the cap space. Hmm. All right, I'll leave you with that. Vancouver. Now, I was just reading something on Pro Hockey Rumors today. A great publication. Almost always talks, whatever they talk about, uh, comes right out of the horse's mouth. They have great insider stuff there. And uh, very reliable. But... The talk is that Elias Peterson's going back up the middle this year because Mikhaev 
is going to play on that left side. And I think that's absolutely what must happen, which is cool. Except you got JT Miller, Peterson, who's going to need a contract in, what, after next year? And Bo Horvat will now be your third line center. Which I don't know suit if that suits Bo Horvat all that much. What I'm trying to say here is Bo Horvat is at five and a half million in this next contract. He's going to be a UFA at the end of the year. Now he could sign for less to stay in Vancouver as a third line center. I don't think you're going to be paying Bo Horvat five million dollars a year to be a third line center. And maybe you will. Maybe five is what you pay you know, to be a third line center. There are third line centers making five million dollars a year. But is that all he's going to want? That's the big question. And the other thing for me is JT Miller is a guy that takes over a room, man. If you're a captain like Horvat is, to me it would be a little uncomfortable to have a guy like JT Miller who is obviously the leader and captain of the team. And you've got the C on there going, yeah, I'll just lead by example, which I understand Horvat does, except he hasn't been great defensively for the last year or two, which isn't a great example. But neither is JT Miller, but JT Miller did get 100 points. But anyways, that's another thing altogether. Horvat's my guy. I really think Bo Horvat could be moving if, if they're out of a playoff spot. Maybe even if they're not, because they desperately need defense in this lineup. I'm sorry, Dermot, Burroughs, Shen, Myers in the top, as your top pairing, that is not good enough, man. This team is really good up front. and may, You have top five at least, I say top three, goaltender and Demko, and you have this defense? I think just for positional reasons alone, Paul Harbach could be moved on for a defenseman. What do you think, Vancouver fans? Now, that being said, I want to also bring this up. I thought JT Miller was going to be traded, and he wasn't. So, But I'm not in that room all the time. And when I was talking to Vancouver fans in the chat rooms, they were saying that they didn't really think Bo Horvat was going to be. They thought JT Miller was going to be the guy that stays and Horvat was going to be the one to go. So, all right. Tell me what you think there in the comment section about that. Vancouver fans, sub yourself up and let me know. All right, Washington Capitals. Their lineup is pretty much their lineup. Um, I will say this. Connor McMichael is not going to be down there on the fourth line this year, for sure. His analytics last year and eye test matched his analytics, which were amazing. This guy is a top six, no doubt about it. I like Connor Brown, but he ain't going to be in the top six here. It's going to be... It's, I'm sure of it. It's going to be Connor McMichael, Strom, and Anthony Manta. Brown plays down in the third line position. And then Shiri takes that role down in the fourth line and plays on the power play. That's what I think sort of is going to happen there. Now, does that mean I think any of them are going to be traded? Not really. Um, as a whole, I don't really see much movement possible with this roster. Except for possibly. Maybe TJ Oshie moves on this year. And again, that would mostly be just because Aunt, uh, Manta can move up. Marcus Johansson can move up. Um, they have some young players that have been moving up. Protas played really well last year in his stint in the, in the NHL at 21 years old. But mostly because Oshie's been hurt a couple times, hurt a little bit, and quite a bit actually. And he just looks like he's dwindling. I think it would be a tough contract to move till 2025. But if they can find a way, I think it's possible that they do move it. And maybe bring in somebody else to replace him on that side. But besides that, I don't even think that is very likely. I don't. I, I don't think there's much movement possible in this lineup anywhere, to tell you the honest truth. I do think they're going to want to do better than... Van Riemsdyk and Eric Gustafsson in their 5-6. So maybe they find somebody with TJ Oshie for that spot. 
go through the whole uh, video and you can see what each I picked for each team. Kind of get an idea maybe who you could trade Oshi for. All right, and finally, the Winnipeg Jets. And this one is pretty easy, although there could be a lot of movement here. I don't see the Winnipeg Jets being in the playoff spot this year. I just I can't see it. Um, Hollabuck got, I mean, as tired as he can get last year because he got worked last year. 66 games played. He was playing back-to-backs and freaking everything, and that was with a good backup. And they don't have a good backup now. David Riddich has been terrible the last couple of years. Um, and I don't see that getting really much better. Also, he's terrible in the room. It must have been the only guy he could get, I swear to God. But, but so that being the case, defense isn't that great. They got some young guys wanting to take over. I could see Dylan DeMello being moved at the deadline. Um to make room for guys like Dylan Sandberg and Hinala and stuff like that. And there being like a youth movement coming in here, which is probably the best thing to do because their defense as a whole is not very good. I heard a lot of people say that Nate Schmidt, he's just too expensive, doesn't provide enough defensively for his cap hit. I can't see him moving at all. Brendan Dillon, maybe, yes. These All these guys for picks I could see happening. But Dubois is almost for sure gone. They're not signing him. You know, he, he's not staying in Winnipeg. Uh, his agent kind of blurted it out, I guess. Uh, Eric Dubois kind of backpedaled on what his agent said, but I don't think his agent says that if there isn't a reason for it. And I think he moves. I think he moves for sure. Blake Wheeler, they already tried to move. Maybe they might be able to find somebody for him, but at $8 million, I doubt it. So my most likely traded player is Pierre-Luc Dubois, which is not really a surprise to anybody. But comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about my rebuild idea, which I, I just don't see any other mode for Winnipeg to go. Uh, Shifley is... I don't know if he turns it around this year and plays defensively. Uh, Blake Wheeler has been absolutely diabolically bad defensively. Ehlers is still young. Connor is still young. You could do as quick a rebuild as you possibly can with those young guys and keep on moving. But honestly, I don't see this team even close to a cup with this roster or add and, and not much way to add to it. So that should be a rebuild. All right, tell me what you think, Winnipeg fans. Sub yourself up and let me know. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Nice talking to you.